What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beard's Garage and this is the Coleman B200 RSV that we got a couple weeks ago from uh, Tractor Supply. So what we're going to do today is first off we're going to top speed it bone stock. Like we haven't did anything but remove the throttle stop and we're going to have Lonnie do it because mm -hmm. it's more impressive. And <laughs> nah, uh, nah, uh, <laughs> and then we're going to swap out to a 62 sprocket. I think this is a 54 tooth stock on this. This is the best dollar for, for power that you can get is swapping out the sprocket because it's like 35 bucks. I have the eBay or Amazon link linked down below where you can get this sprocket that bolts up this bike. And it's the biggest difference you're going to tell in power. You will lose top end and that's why we're going to speed test it before and after just across the field. We're not going to go into like crazy details just to see what he tops out at and how fast, you know, the phone GPS is going. But uh, so after we do that, then we're going to do a two inch lift kit on the bike. The biggest downside to these Mega Moto style frames is they're so low. They're comfortable and they're really controllable, especially if you're starting out. This is our second favorite mini bike. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Uh, Trailmaster is the first. It might be first after we lift it a little. It may be. It's a stronger frame, way stronger than the Trailmaster. Like that's one thing I will say, the way they've gusted it and stuff, I can guarantee it's going to be stronger. But we're going to lift it two inches and we had a guy reach out on Instagram. Here's his handle. I'm going to go give him a follow. But he had already lifted one. He found one in Tractor Supply. So what we're going to do is two inch spacers inside of here. So we'll drop the forks out. We've machined some spacers that fit in here. And then we'll get a longer, two inch longer bolt. And then we got 11 inch shocks to go in the rear. The only problem is when you lift the back, the chain gets into the little cradle, the little jack shaft that's built onto the cradle of the engine. So we're going to come up with a bracket to raise that. Then we're going to have a kit on our website that come with the spacers and the brackets. You just got to buy shocks off Amazon. You can lift your bike two inches. Bam. Stove pipe mm -hmm. is your sister. So Lonnie's going to get on this hog. He's going to go rip across the field. Just try to stay across the fence line. Watch out for gopher holes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we'll lift it afterwards after doing this rocket change. Oh, yeah. Hog box, baby. So they're they start. most of the time. <laughs> I'll go here. It's uphill, so we'll see what she does. Off when I did that. Did you? Yeah. But what'd she do? 25. 25. You know, screenshot that mug. So 25 miles per, which is about expected for a stock bike. All right, so we're just going to throw it on a lift to do the sprocket. Of course, we got to loosen up the chain tensioners, pop off the chain, take out this bolt, and then we can slide the whole wheel off as a unit. So the first thing, we're going to take off this chain guard. We're not going to be able to run this unless we build some spacers to clear the new sprocket. So the next thing we need to find the master link, which is right here. Pop it off with a set of pliers. So we got that link out. Now we have our chain removed. Okay. Next, we can use a 14 wrench on the bolt and a 17 socket on the nut to remove the axle bolt. You can see it has a machine spacer on this side and it has them built into the brake bracket on that side. So we just need to make sure to put this one back on the proper side and put our chain tensioners back on when we slide the bolt on. All right. okay. So all we have to do is use a 10 socket, pull these three bolts off, take that off and swap on to the new sprocket. I did just notice that we have a four bolt sprocket. This is the first one I've seen use a three bolt. So we're gonna have to drill our own holes in the new sprocket, which is not a huge deal, but it is a pain if you mess up. Mess up, yeah. So we'll count the teeth because it is not marked. So you can see this is our 50 tooth, this is our 60, 
get a massive jump in low end power. Of course, it's gonna knock down, I would say, maybe five miles per hour off our top speed, but this is gonna be worth it in the woods. And if you like gravy and biscuits and stuff, and you're built like me, uh, strong foundation, uh, then you're gonna definitely want this for sure. So now we gotta find a way to set these dead on each other and get them in a spot like, I wanna see what race this is, slide a piece of tube to hold them still, and we can center punch them, drill them out, and bolt that puppy on. Do it as straight as possible, because if you get it off, then you're gonna have a sprocket that walks and your chain can bind up in certain places. Uh, or do it, I'm not your dad. <laughs> or am I? Hmm. There's a time at Cabo. Okay, so what we did was I found this old hub. This is a wheel hub from like BMI carts or whatever that nor normally had a four bolt pattern for a live axle. Well, I had machine like cut the sprocket off a long time ago for something, I don't know what. Ask me in the past. But it fits literally down in there like butter. So it'll line both of them up. So if you have an old wheel hub, most likely these Chinese wheel hubs will line it up. And then I got a clamped brace, so I'm gonna take, this was actually bigger than a, than a 5 16 It is a 2364, right under 3 8 It's a metric. J-O-B, holding it down. You ever see? <laughs> Mom, I love you. P-O-P, holding it down. Pray these all good people, spoiled baby for life. Have you ever seen that? She's like, tell my mom I love her. She's getting in the car and she's like, J-O-B, holding it down. <laughs> Where she's at, bro. <laughs> we do have to upgrade to a little bit longer chain. So you're gonna wanna run to Track Supply, Royal King, buy it online, get a 40 or 420 chain. You can run 40 on 420, you can't run 420 on 40. A little bit wider tooth. We got some 420 though. Hey. 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 It's like Becca's uh, new scale she bought. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Yeah, but this centers it. See? So Becca's about to start making bread. So she needs to buy a scale for her bread. Mm -hmm. So she orders this scale <laughs> and it's on the counter and I'm like, that Let's scale's got a picture of weed on it. Like the scale on the box are big old pile of weed on it. And I was like, this thing's got weed on it. And then it says 420 food scale or something like that is the name of it. She didn't even know. I thought it was uh, like baked kale or something. <laughs> I wish she was my mom when I was a teenager. I'm like, mom, it's just baked kale. Get off my back. <laughs> Me and my boys in the garage. J-O-B. Oh, no, <laughs> okay, now you're going to slide that brake. Rack mm -hmm. it in over the you deuce. What it is. Come on, baby. There we go. Yeah, there it okay. is. Okay, woo! Yee. Can't see. Okay, I'm gonna pull off this chain guard here. Look at that little baby sprocket. Nine. Nine two, so that's nice. So this thing is gonna be geared low. Uh, next episode, we're putting Larry Meat Hoosiers on it, the Meaty Boy Tires 27s. <laughs> and once we put the Larry Meat Hoosiers, we're gonna build that, we're gonna dyno that engine, fully build it, like port the head, everything. I would rather jump up to a Wildcat engine, honestly, because I know that's gonna make like five and a half horsepower. That's a 196 CC. But what's practical? What's practical is people using what they got. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, that's probably perfect. If this thing don't have to be cut, I'm gonna let you kiss my sister. No. Oh, no, well, no. Oh, gotta be cut. That's perfect though. Like, that we had this random length. All right, so we can cut that, we can drag it back. I think this is the way that goes up there. So when we lift this back later, 
what you're going to notice is this chain is going to get in the swing arm worse because the angle is going to go down so we got to lift the way they made this engine cradle you got to lift the back we're not only going to do that we're going to swap out to our metal bushings we sell on rbgcarts.com we're going to see if they fit in this and if they do upgrade because we know from experience that's an issue it's already an issue on the wildcat at stage three it was almost an issue at stage two i think it would have been if we'd have went woods riding where it flexes those rubber bushings and kicks your chain so you're going to want to if our bushings work which they should uh, then you're going to want to definitely upgrade to that holler at your boy i'll give you a discount mm. okay remember you always put your your master link keeper trailing so that means the open side needs to be pointed backwards of the direction your chain is running okay how she feel you know you're over here Surprise results. It's torquier and it got a faster mile per hour. All right, so long as said it did two miles per hour more, and I think the reason for that is the engine was able to produce enough power, that low in power to get up that hill. Because mm -hmm. that, that field's, I mean, it may look flat on camera, but it's got a good steady grade to it. It's an incline the whole time. And at the crest, I let off on both of them just so that there's no downhill momentum to mess yeah. with it. So you probably would have gained five miles per hour on flat ground with the 50 tooth, but I can tell a big difference. It's not like gonna blow your mind difference. If you're keeping the stock engine, you might, if you don't wanna take out the governor and stuff and put a cam and stuff, I would probably do the 72 tooth for woods riding. But this is perfect for all around a good, good a balance. balance bike, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that we know we got more low end, we're gonna pull out these forks and I've machined up some spacers. We're going to be selling a kit to do a two inch lift the only thing like i said you're going to have to buy shocks from amazon we'll link them down below they're 11 inch shocks we'll put a different varieties down there but these are the same bushings we actually use for our swing arm i just cut a quarter inch off of them so these are one inch so we're going to stack two of them inside there so we're going to unclamp the fork unbolt it here these will slide in and we're going to buy a two inch longer bolt so we have to remove one fork at a time so first starting with removing the tire then we can remove the brake caliper, unbolt this, unbolt this clamp, slide the fork out, put the two spacers back in and slide it back up. We're gonna go ahead, pull the front tire off and put the bike up on a jack. We have to use a jack because a motorcycle lift will not use, work on it. Let's go. Again, on this one, there is spacers on both sides. They look to be the same size. Uh, just make sure they are and put the right ones in the right place. Pull that out, Lonnie. Okay, let's compare the spacers. Yep, same exact size spacers, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Look, you can see where they, this is like so new that they're, they're bandsawing these instead of like getting them CNC'd or Chinese in seed. <laughs> <laughs> so we got this 17 mil in the top. Once we take it out, it'll allow this fork to drop out. There we go. And then we just take these. That's a so it does have a lip that centers this. So we can machine that same center on so there. You only need two and a half because that's like a half inch. Yeah. Three inch maybe. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna 
mock this out i'm going to machine this to set on that and then i'm going to machine the top one to have that same lip so it what it does is center the fork in the triple clamp so let's jump to gopro footage of that So we got a longer bolt. I actually had this, so that was super lucky. I think this is a head bolt for a GX390. And then I've taken and I made a lip. So this isn't exactly going to be two inches on, on the front. It's going to be a hair bit smaller. And then I opened up the bottom. So this bottom sits right on there. This one sit right on there. And this sits right in that lip to keep this all centered. So it's a little tight because of this crimp style setup, but Lonnie's gonna tap that in there, get it started. It's sliding down there. Yeah, once you get past that, we can take this slide it in get that lined up right there, there it is now grab that bolt drop that down i think it's a 14. Yeah, it's got three already. bolts of them. Mm. i was about to say should not already be right. 14. and then we have a lift the same thing on the other side like i said we're going to make a kit for these uh that you can just bolt right up they're going to need a 14 on it I think it's 14. Grab 15 and deep foil too. Back it up. So our bolt's a little long all the way up. So hold that shock in there. I'm going to put a few spacers on this puppy and <laughs> washers. It's weird. They factory lift the gap in there. You see it? Mm -hmm. Where this neck tube, I've never seen that before. Okay. Now we'll put the wheel on, put the brake caliper on last. No, we won't. We gotta do the other side. So yeah, it's just bolt up the brake caliper once the tire's on. You gotta just mimic this on the other side. We'll get shorter bolts. We'll find out the exact length you would need. We might even be able to buy them in bulk to sell them with the kits. That's what we'll do. So. We'll get this done, then we'll set it off the stand and see how much more brake it has. Chopper style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brake. Now it's just a brake caliper. And the front's done. All right, dropper. Does it look uphill in the front? Mm-hmm. It does? I mean, I think so. Mm -hmm. You're nowhere near bothering it out now, though. Yeah. So we went on Amazon and found these. I think these are $65. They come with little sleeves that go in here to adapt them to this bolt size. I think, do you think we, no, we stay at that. We're gonna stay at that front location, which is a little softer because we have preload and we can add nitrogen to these because these are nitrogen shocks. So we're gonna mount just like that. But what you'll see is this chain is gonna start getting into the swing arm until we raise that engine up. We'll have to take out the other side because we won't be able to fit the shock in. Dang. 
Slam. <laughs> All right, hold the back up. I'm gonna grab these spacers. So that shocks come with these little rings. You gotta slide in. They'll stay in some of them. Oh, they'll stay in both of them on this one. It just adapts it down so it's got a bushing. So that's gonna go like that. And we're going to the front. Yeah, back to the front. Go ahead and put that bolt in. Just to hold it. I'll do the washer on the inside. Kind of a pain. There it is. That's really <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, those look good. If we, you can see, if we was to tighten this chain up, we're in the swing arm right here. You see that right there? Mm -hmm. We're in the swing arm with the chain. Even if we tighten it, we'd be rubbing the dickens out of that. So, what we have to do is raise the back of this engine up, but we can't with this air box. We only have like a half inch. It's just gonna raise up the back. I hope the fuel tank ain't an issue. I think you're right on it won't be. It'll tilt up, but we gotta pull the air box and the exhaust. So the only downside to a two inch lift to properly do it to not get your chain in the swing arm is to lift this point up by taking this bolt out of this engine cradle, jacking it up two inches and putting some type of riser block in there a few moments later so those uh bushings we was machining we pushed inside of this one and a quarter thick wall tubing and then i did some uh rosette welds some plug welds so if we pull these off you can see it's solid in an inch of each of the tube so this is simulating the original swing arm bushing thing so then we cut these on a plasma table just some ears with a piece of flat and i've got some i'm going to bolt this all together so we're using this to simulate the actual engine cradle. Tighten this up. Then we can weld this to this. Well, I made that way too short. Anyways, we can weld this to this. I'm gonna have to cut a new piece of flat stock because that's way too short, I wasn't thinking. Gosh, I'm stupid. Uh, and then we can weld this and then we basically have a little adapter. So we'll pull this off of this, bolt this to the original engine mount bolt this where the engine mount went, then we can come up with some type of a bracket to come from this to that and weld it together. You get what I'm saying? And that'll basically lift the engine two inches and we just bolt this in and then we can put this in a jig later and come up with a better way to do this that's faster and cleaner and nicer. There it be. Now we can unbolt this off, bolt this where the swing arm was, bolt this new thing to where the swing arm is, and then come up with our cradle thingy boy. So with this new stance, we have the engine, the riser installed, if you can see that. So it worked out, that little tower thing I built sets right on that machine piece. Yeah, so we can actually just take, and I can weld this all the way to this, like it's as simple as that and then i can take this out and make a jig to be able to build these on the table and then i'll sell these with the the spacers that go in here so that's what will be in the kit so i'm going to tack this pull it out fully weld it and then uh then we'll be able to put an exhaust on it i went ahead this is that tilson carb off the road to horsepower we borrowed it for now. We're probably going to zip tie the factory tank on the back like we do on the test frame for now. And then later we'll come up with an aluminum gas tank that bolts in here. Put your fill lid right here in front of your crotch area and then that'll solve that issue. But you do have to take off factory airbox exhaust and the gas tank to do this kit to make it all proper. So we'll get that tacked up and we'll see our final product. So there is our lift kit that's a two inch lift kit baby rough country uh but it's like i said we just machine those bushings push them in the pipe and they fit in there like kind of loosely so that's why we weld them but that's all it'll be i might change it up and make it look better but i think that's perfectly fine like honestly it's welded on both sides of this 3 16 um then it's full caterpillar freaking dirty caterpillar down through there on the side so we can bolt this in now and we're done other than coming up with a gas tank and an exhaust you can see you can lower or raise the engine once you unbolt that rear mount uh, so it's actually pretty handy but it does have rubber bushings in that and i'm pretty sure we haven't tested them but 
the bushings we sell for the trail masters on our website should fit this we're going to try that out next week and make sure they do then we can come out with a kit like basically just add comb into the mix of bikes that fits uh, because you're definitely going to want to remove that that trail master is making 15 horsepower i think and it's already like at 13 horsepower it was skipping the teeth so you got to do it if you're going to get past 10 horsepower under 10 it's good until they wear out then it's bad all the way around all right so this is an ec pipe they use like a fat daddy pipe it's fatter than like this is a little bit bigger than one inch i don't know what the outside diameter is any hoosies i made this exhaust mount out of a piece of solid one inch i tapped three eighths i welded a axle collar to it so it bolts on we don't have to send in the paint we can take this off and powder coat it later probably never but uh so i got a reducer in this muffler this little reducer here reduces this down to i think it's a one and a quarter up to one and a half inch reducer this is factory comes with the muffler these are the mufflers we sell on rbgcars.com they got a resonator in them you can or a silencer and they work really well like they sound stock with the silencer in you pull them out they sound like a freaking sports bike not really a four-wheeler or something but uh so i got the flange cleaned up lonnie actually cleaned it up so i'm going to tack this on somewhere in that vicinity i just got to space it in between the nuts so i can get the nuts on and off i was going to say once you let lonnie tack it why you hold it can you lonnie uh -huh. so you're going to put a track a tracker dacker Okay, don't look like much at all. That looks straight there. I'm gonna have to cut a slither off this thing and then we can slide, then we can figure out where to cut this off because it goes inside of this just like purpose nick. And then we can get all these cut and then I can weld it to this flange first, slide it all in here, get it, and then tack it to this. That's the beauty about this. You kind of have, it's like a ball, ball joint. And move it around and get different wrangles out of it. My knee in the way. <laughs> oh, that's perfect, snicked. That's like couldn't ask for no better than that unless you wanted it better than you asked for it. We haven't rode this hog yet. I did order some bolts from McMaster car. That's the actual right length. Ordered 20 of them. They're not cheap. They're not expensive either, but. <laughs> 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 but they're not. I mean, I paid about, I think a dollar a piece for them though. Hey, Lonnie. What? You have a four meal, how long? Slow it down. <laughs> it was in the Sonic Wings. Feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Get that out of there. That takes all the sound away.
but it's nice. Great. It's, uh, I think, I think that's my go-to bike now. I do believe I might swap over. <laughs> Coleman did a good job. Red Bridge Garage did a better job. <gasps> Lifting it, that exhaust sounds real good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> It is like it's honestly I think my favorite bike for sure. Here he comes. It feels more controlled than anything. I was gonna say right when I I think you need the up. the shock softer. Yeah. It's stiff. It's even stiff for me. I mean I know what you're thinking. Y'all are practically the same size, I know, <laughs> but I got more in my pockets. I keep a lot more in my pockets. We can do some real burnouts on this hog. But, but it once it gets those tires on it, I think it's at least with those, plus that, with the power. that power. Yeah, well I have, I bought the Son of Tires, same ones these bikes got on them, and that's next. But I think it's my I favorite. I was leaning it over in the turns in the wood zone. It felt really good. With the good. kickstand down. <laughs> no, I just put that on. Oh. But you put uh, it down for no reason, Bluetooth kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt good. I like it. A uh, lot. It's I like how firm it is, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like I really like even the front feels good. It doesn't dive the nose or anything. No. Oh. This is honestly, if you're looking to get a bike, this is what I would honestly recommend. And we're not in the greatest relationship with Coleman. We have been nothing but trash talk them for three years. Do I well, apologize? They, it Absolutely worked. not. But they finally came out with something. It worked. I know, yeah. We talked so much crap, they had to remodel their whole industry. <laughs> but uh, I, I like it a lot. But. That lift kit works great. I don't feel any kind of flat, which I wouldn't expect this to, but still, that exhaust sounds real good. I like it. It feels. That felt fun for a stock engine. Well, it's a horsepower more or so well with the yeah, car because we put the tiltson carb off the road to horsepower stage one plus that tiltson which is like a stock carb it's just got an adjustable needle and stuff and then we did and the exhaust and the 62 sprocket all yeah, of that yeah, put yeah, together yeah. made it feel pretty dang fun. this is a dang good bike for someone to start on like stock would have been a good starter bike this is definitely a good stage one for this hog i like it a lot but yeah, I'll, you it sounded like short. he was cruising through that. I was. I'll yeah. short. It'll stay. <laughs> it's lifting the back tire <laughs> off the ground. So I think it's, I believe from what I feel, it's a better bike for sure. I like it. And that surprised me. So you can see the ground clearance there compared to a stock um, Trailmaster. This one, the Coleman has more ground clearance now that it's lifted, but Lonnie made a good assessment. Like I was like, why does it feel so good? It feels so controlled. And it's because of the seat height. Look at the seat height compared to the Trailmaster seat height. You're, it doesn't 
look like much, but it's about two, three inches of seat height difference. Yeah, this Even, one's but, lower. So there's twice while I was riding that the front end washed out, and it's just so quick to stab your foot down correctly. Yeah, so you have more ground clearance on the Coleman, but you have more control because the seat's, seat's lower. lower. And the tires is why he's washing out. These V-treads, take them off any bike you got. <laughs> like, they're garbage. We have some sun of sitting right there that's for the next video and the engine's getting fully built you will want to extend your i think if you buy a a uh, ex colon what are they called ct200 ex i think uh and put those kickstand on it it'll straighten it up because they was always too tall from factory but that's it folks lifted this son of a gun is my favorite mini bike i'm I'm going to say it right now, but I won't know until we put horsepower and tires on it, but it feels way better. It felt fun with the stock engine. Well, that's what stage I'm saying. Stage one. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying is, look <laughs> how hard it leans. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so these kits, these lift kits are available on Redbeard's Girl on rbgcars.com. Make sure to go check them out if you have the bike and don't have a lathe and stuff or a way to do it yourself. We're going to sell them as cheap as we can. Um, and then the shocks are about 70 bucks. So all in all, you can lift the bike for around $200 and you do have to do the air filter, exhaust, and a gas tank. Unfortunately, it's just the way the frame's built. We always take the gas tanks off anyways. Like even on our Trail Masters, we put a real gas tank. With this one, I think we have a solution of aluminum tank we're gonna come out with very soon. So uh, yeah, 